Good morning, good afternoon, maybe even good evening. My name is Dr. Daniel Lattimore. I am serving as the Community Domain Chair for the Society of Consulting Psychology. This is Community Conversation with Dr. Daniel Lattimore. I paused because I thought maybe some music would come up, but in case it doesn't, we're going to keep it going. <laughs> uh, so as I shared, I am Community Domain Chair. Uh, we're really passionate about connecting peer support, uh, getting people connected, uh, feeling part of a network. Um, if, if you have questions or you want to just be part of the larger community, we strongly encourage you to join SCP, which is APA Division 13. Um, and you can go to our website, societyofconsultingpsychology.org, in, in which case we have more information. Um, today, I'd like to just give a couple of moments to happenings around this time. Uh, so this is April 2024. Um, so one thing we just came off that we're very proud of is the virtual coffee event that happened on the 9th. Um, and if you missed it, that's okay. We're going to have them quarterly. So uh, please look forward to them in the future. Add them to your calendar. Uh, another thing we have going on is uh, just meet up. A meetup, it could be regional, it could be virtual. Uh, just if you get plugged into our listserv and as well as our LinkedIn, you'll find that we have uh, just moments where we can meet up and, and talk about all things consulting psychology. Uh, we could be talking about transitioning, what we found helpful uh, in the transition, or and or you can get expertise advice from people who are already in the field, um, or maybe you're just starting out your own practice and you'd like to just have people pick your brain or pick other people's brains. So that's something you can look out for. Um, another thing we have is our president, uh, Mark Sokol, is having a town hall on April 29th at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So go ahead and add that to the calendar as well. If you're looking for education, um, you can Go back to our main link uh, and click on events and education. But just as a quick plug, we have uh, a series on specific to Hogan assessments starting on May 2nd. We have the Harry Levinson series um, that is for people who are maybe coming from more of a clinical background and are wondering more how these skills overlap into a consultation uh, sense within businesses and organizations and communities. So that's happening on May 7th. Uh, and one more thing is that if you, we have a specific interest group to transitioning um, and we have a series dedicated to the transition of within your career on May 13th. So please, please, please check those out on our website and also uh, get plugged into our social media and specific to our LinkedIn. So now that I've gotten that there, uh, I want to transition into our special guest for today. You might be wondering who is our special guest, Daniel? You've got all the charisma, pizzazz, and we're going to keep giving it to you. Uh, we're going to give you big energy and really excited to have this next guest come on. Um, known her for quite some time and is just, you know, part of the glue that makes SCP great. So please give a warm welcome to Dr. Lacey Farrow. Hello, um, it's great to be here and I appreciate the warm welcome, Daniel. Nothing but the best. If I had flowers, I would give them to you virtually. Likewise. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, so Dr. Farrell, I know just in the time that I know you, you've been so accomplished and I want to give you a chance to say who you are for the folks. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Well, again, welcome from uh, sunny Virginia. Uh, Virginia Beach. Um, I am personally an organizational psychologist. Um, I'm also a clinician, so therapist by training as well. Um, and I'm also a coach, so I'm certified in organizational development, coaching, executive, and emotional intelligence. Um, and when I'm not doing that, um, I'm also um, a faculty member, so I actually train other professionals how to coach. So I'm a coaching instructor 
And, um, and I teach uh, multiple classes every single week to train people to become certified to do some of the very things that we do. Um, so those, those are some of my activities in addition to teaching in uh, graduate programs in, um, in psychology and just being passionate to help people uh, to learn what we're actually employing every single day in our consulting firms or internal if you're an internal consultant. So that's just a little, a little bit about myself. Just a little bit. Oh my goodness. That, <laughs> and I know knowing you, I know that that continue, like you have done so many things, you've accomplished so many things. Um, how did you even like get into this path? Like, what does this path look like for you? Uh, that's an amazing question. Um, I actually am a transplant, a professional transplant from other fields. Um, I started out in the medical field. Um, from middle school and high school, I went through training and I was working in the hospitals even when I was in high school. Um, I was doing medical billing and coding and I was being mentored in that space. So um, I didn't start out with psychology, um, although I was exposed to some sociology, psychology, um, because my aunt was, um, she was a social worker and a sociologist, and she um, would expose me to some of her classes um, when I would visit during the summer. So I had little moments and, and little bits of exposure to the field um, when I would sit through some of her sociology lectures. So I think there were small little seeds planted when I was really focused on the medical field, which is really all I, I wanted to do. Um, I never thought of being a psychologist. It was always medicine, which is uh, my first love um, and, and my passion. But as time went on, you know, I, um, I became interested in, in various fields and um, I went into counseling at some point. So I obtained my master's degree in uh, professional counseling and just working in that arena was very unique, very interesting. Um, and I learned a lot of, uh, ex I had a lot of experience and I learned a lot about people, about systems. Um, I learned a lot about family and systems. And while I was interested in business, I think the seeds started to get planted. I was still in that world. Um, very passionate about trauma. And I've had a lot of years of working in, um, in clinics, hospitals, um, hospices, um, working with people who have dementia, um, working in substance use and truancy courts, doing a lot of different things, um, having leadership in those areas as well. And as time went on, um, being in clinical and neuro, while I enjoyed that, um, I had a chance to do a lot of amazing activities, be trained in a lot of different areas. Uh, but eventually I, I came upon um, a challenge when I was working in some, in some organizations and I saw a lot of toxic leadership. Um, I saw a lot of toxic leadership. I saw people struggling, um, coming up with health problems because they were showing up to these environments. Um, I saw emotions change. I saw relationships. Um, I saw people locking themselves in their car at lunch and just saying, my life is just miserable because of where I work. And that really transformed me. I started asking myself a lot of questions during those seasons. Um, and, you know, what if we made this better for employees? Or what if they were exposed to this? Or what if leadership did that? And a lot of those questions couldn't get out of my head. Um, so while I was involved and I've had my own business in the past, I eventually became very, very steeped in leadership. I started really studying it. Um, I started really starting to immerse myself in experiences. And I wanted an answer for how we could make the workplace a healthy, um, thriving place where people want to show up and they can grow in communities. And this led me, again, a lot of different seeds being planted where I'm not just in psychology, but now I'm doing more specifically of focusing on the organizations. Even though I've done a lot of... Um, leadership and management and supervision and mentoring and training others, even in the clinical space. I've, I've done that with various clinics and hospitals and organizations. However, now it's more intentionally going into certain firms or organizations. So that's a little bit about how I got to where I am. But I will say this for anyone listening, sometimes negative uh, events or factors can actually be the fuel to help you understand your purpose. Um, and also to help you understand, uh, it's kind of a compass. Um, and it's kind of like the giant slayer is sometimes it's when the giant shows up is when you have an opportunity to begin to, to work towards solutions and have ideation because there is a problem for you to solve. So that's just, that's just kind of my mindset on what brought me here. Wow. Yeah, no, that sounds uh, purposeful in that, you know, even though your walk started more medical, you also had that background of looking into systems and structures and also um, just really having a, an eye on 
how people were affected by these systems, you know, like who's helping the helpers. And um, I think that's a super, super, uh, just a, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the word, just I, I think that's a great skill to have and, and really awareness of the people around you and how they might be affected in these systems. Okay, well, uh, I guess my next question for you would be, why, how did, how did SCP, like, cause I, I know I'm hearing that organizational feel that, um, you know, I'm sure we've all at some point been part of a structure where we could see, you know, the results of, as you spoke to toxic leadership or a toxic work environment, but uh, how, how did you get into SCP? Yes. Um, so I was already involved in other organizations, um, especially just business uh, organizations, counseling. I was involved in that before I became involved in SCP. And I was already involved in APA um, and other divisions that focus on psychological issues, social issues, things of that nature. Um, I actually found out about you all um, from the APA Monitor magazine, that publication, um, because I was an avid reader. I would read everything, listen to every podcast. I was already familiar with PSYOP, but um, when I saw SCP, um, I was just like, okay, yes, I need to I need to learn more. And I just started getting involved in volunteering, uh, you know, fairly early on. Deal. And when you say PSYOP, you're speaking to the Society of Industrial Organizational Psychology? Yes. Excellent. Yep. Uh, so, well, that would be that's division 14 we're division 13 um, i would call them our cousins because we're both of you know the business industry and you know another shout out to psyop because that conference is happening in chicago um, i believe the 17th through the 20th of april um, in which case we also have scp members meeting up um, so you know if you want to get plugged in more hear more about our community and how we like to engage and you know, we believe in an and and not an or space. So uh, the more the merrier, we'd love to get to know you. And so thank you for giving us that chance to shout out Psy Yes. Yeah, okay, so excellent. Um, so you, remind me how long you've been involved with SCP? Ooh, um, I don't know if it's six years now. Um, it's It feels like it's longer, but um, it's roughly somewhere around there. Excellent, excellent. And uh, do you have any like things that stand out and experiences? Uh, any any funny stories? That... Yes, a few come to mind. So I'm going to keep it brief because I know we have quite a bit to cover. But um, I remember so so you. Um, I've worked with you in in different respects, and um, uh, Dr. Wilson Starks, uh, myself, you. We've been involved in the ethics. Um, and really working on the revision of the APA ethics code and really, you know, consulting and, and being a support to the ethics committee, which we're now on, which is wonderful. Um, but at the time we were liaisons and I was moving. So I was moving from New Jersey um, and I was moving to where I am now. And we had a meeting set and it was so important for me. I love ethics. I'm very much for ethics. And you had to, you had something going on with your schedule so you could only make a certain day. I was moving that day. I did not want to tell you all. I did not want to change the date. And I was so pumped to do it. So I went ahead and said, okay, I'll do it. But the movers were hours late. So by the time, so I'm taking notes on my phone. I have amazing notes that are still on my, on my iPhone. Uh, but once everything was done, they finished a little bit early and we were still talking in the meeting. So what I did was um, I had to put you all on speakerphone and I realized there were things that they did not put away. So I'm like, okay, you all are asking me, well, what do you think, Lacey? I said, um, give me just a second to reflect. So I put it on, I put it on mute and I'd run upstairs and grab something and I'd put it in the car. And then I'd say, well, you know, based on reflecting, I'm thinking X, Y, and Z. So I'd come back with an answer. I was listening the whole time. And then I would say, you know, I would love to hear what Daniel has to say about that. And then I put myself on mute again. And then it was connecting to the car. So it would, you say, I can't hear you. Like, I said, oh, I'll, I'll, give me just a second. So it was constantly connecting. Um, but I was in that meeting and I, I literally was there through most of it. But I was dedicated to be there that I was moving and I still was putting you all on speakerphone and running up and down the stairs um, as I was still thinking about ethics and what my response is. But uh, I was laughing about that the other day, but that, that's just a little bit of um, some of my shenanigans uh, in SCP. So I mentioned or I, I imagined a, 
a Benny Hill sequence. Like it's just, nah, 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 and you're just trying to run around and, and like yes. say, yes, I, I really feel like, but I think that also speaks to you in terms of like your, your ability to get it done. And, you know, I, I, in hindsight, I appreciate you accommodating my schedule um, and, and still saying yes to it and getting it done. And I think that that really speaks to um, your, just your focus, your focus and your drive. And, um, you know, so you mentioned that, you know, we were on the ethics liaison, we are part of the ethics liaison team. And um, I know that you wear another hat. You know, I mentioned myself as community domain chair. What are some of the other involvements you have with SCP? Oh, a lot. <laughs> um, for some reason, I always say yes, um, but I, I love saying yes. Um, I love giving back. And um, sometimes I think about how, how many things I am doing. I'm like, oh, I didn't realize I was doing all these things. Uh, but I am the current DEI domain lead. So this is my third year um, serving in this capacity, which has been amazing. Um, I am basically um, uplifted by just a community of strong voices and identities of psychologists who have amazing contributions. So I'm working with graduate students who, um, whom I mentor in our DIA Excellence Program, kind of a training program for, for um, you know, graduate students as well as early careers. And I'm also um, over grants. So we have grant and scholarship programs that I've created. Um, we actually have a new one this year for master's thesis. So if you master's thesis, so if you have a master's thesis that you've completed, we now want to include you as well. Um, and of course, we have research grants because we want to make this a powerhouse um, for original contributions in our field. And I believe we're experts who can uh, not only publish when you're at a position to publish, but I want people to begin to produce more and more early on. So we're encouraging that heavily. So I'm definitely involved in that. Um, I'm also involved in um, our graduate student consortium. So I'm going to be helping with that this year and making sure that I can co-lead that successfully with the feedback and contribution of students. And to be honest, if I go into everything I do at SCP, I think we'll be here all day. <laughs> but, um, but these are some of the areas I'm passionate about. And I'm just really excited about being involved and just being available. That's kind of my biggest thing is be available. What do you need from me? I'm, I'm here to help. And that's just my perspective. Well said, uh, Lacey. And just for a recap, you are the DEIA chair. That's diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. Yes. And within that, you also mentioned the Graduate Student Consortium. So we have our annual conference in February. And recently, we've taken steps to include voices across all levels of uh, their career, including students. And so this is really a focus on the development of students at our conferences. Um, and you know, Lacey and I both headed some uh, sessions on you know, finding your career path, being able to advocate for self, um, and then just working alongside uh, other domains. So we have our education domain, we have our advocacy domain, we have a research domain. And you also mentioned grants. So we have a lot of opportunities um, for collaboration. And that's what we're hoping to do in our larger community. So it's worth community conversation. Uh, and I know we're almost coming to a close, but you mentioned that you're, you're really rooted and involved in SCP and just in wanted to leave some space for any other announcements coming up. Yes, I do have an announcement. It's a um, plot twist, uh, you might want to call it. Um, I, I love suspense, so plot twist. Um, I'm actually running for APA president. Um, yes, so I've been nominated to run and I accepted that nomination. And um, the voting actually starts Monday so I want everyone to get up early and go ahead and put in your votes. Um, I would love for you to consider me for APA, uh, excuse me, for SCP. <laughs> okay, APA, I was this say 13 all president. APA. We'll see what happens in the future on the APA part. Uh, but for now, the SCP, um, we mean APA Division 13 <laughs> president. But um, that would be an incredible honor. Um, I would love to serve this community. And um, this is really, for me, a community-based uh, leadership initiative. It's not just necessarily my own agenda, um, although I do have a desire to see SCP flourish and to be able to train other generations. 
So, um, you know, why am I running? You might say, well, why is this important? Um, I'll put it this way. My motto is working together, winning together. I want us to thrive. Um, I see SCP as not just a society, but also as an economy. And we can bring a lot of change and growth to um, not only practitioners who are out there in the world who um, are trying to find their way into consulting, but also those who we have the responsibility who are already in our community to continue to help them to thrive in our field. And with the advance of technology and all of the different um, organizations and entities that do coaching or that do some sort of business strategy or that do other kinds of work, we want to make sure that we are still a, a leader in this field and that we can stand apart. So I do have some initiatives I would love to put forward to make sure that we can continue to be a leader and that we can reach people of all um, of all creeds, colors, spaces, uh, lead, uh, life experiences, educational trainings, et cetera. So I'm just going to mention those briefly because I know we only have a certain amount of time. I would love to see applied psychology um, elevated so that we can begin to see more space for us, more opportunities for us in government in the public sectors. And I would love to see that in universities as well, where we can continue to have opportunities for consultants to be able to really be a leader. Health service providers, while I'm in that camp, <laughs> I don't disrespect that camp, but we, we, they're not the only ones uh, who are qualified to help others. And we have a unique qualification. So I believe that we really need to elevate our platform and continue to grow so that others can really you know, benefit from, from the help and service that we provide. Um, and just very briefly, um, I wanna make sure that um, we also are looking at other topics such as certification and how we stand out in this field. And I want us to really take a serious look on a viable path for those who may not be from a clinical background, who may come from other degree programs, who want to be taken seriously in this field, but have great concerns about how this is handled. Um, and, and there are quite a few other things I'd like to say, um, but one big initiative I all also have is taking care of everyone here from late career um, all the way to those who aren't even fully acclimated in, in, into our field. And I really want to reach people in their bachelor's programs. I don't want to reach people when they get to a master's or a PhD, um, just like the Chicago School, which I am, um, I am an alumnus of uh, the Chicago School. But um, I want to make sure that we're reaching people who there, there are a bit of uh, business programs at the bachelor's level, business psychology. So we can't reach people when they're already, you know, at a certain age, which is great. Right. I'm, I'll be at the cusp of 40, <laughs> early 40s, you know, um, if I do get into this role. But we want to reach other people who maybe they're still 18, maybe they're 19. And this is growing people into the field. And this is when mentorship is great, when people are making these early decisions. So I think a part of our winning is, yes, strategy and working together. Um, but I think beyond partnership and strategy is reaching people early because the wave of the future are those people who are coming up. We can't leave Gen Z and we have a Gen A coming up. So how do we expose people early on? Because again, the battle is lost if people are in other camps and they are focusing on uh, other, um, other disciplines like saying, well, I'm just gonna go into coaching, I don't need psychology. Why do we uniquely do something different? Why do we offer something different? And I think we have to reach audiences a lot earlier. So these are some of my ideas. I have quite a few more, um, but um, I, uh, I invite people to have a conversation with me if they'd like to learn more. Wow. Well. Dr. Farrow, working together, winning together. Yes, winning you together. are you are acknowledging and and mentioning your presidential bid for SCP Division yes. Thirteen, and maybe in the future APA president. Yes, right now yes. we're doing Division Thirteen SCP. Okay. Yes, Freud right. would say a slip of the tongue, so I don't know. Maybe maybe there's something. <laughs> Hidden that I haven't yet the, acknowledged. I don't know. <laughs> what for the tongue manifestation? That's within yes. the side. Reading we'll content, we never know. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations to you. Uh, we're gonna come to a button here. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Lacey. Uh, and I encourage folks to get involved with SCP. Um, if you heard what you, if, if you heard today something that inspired you or sparked you. Uh, please reach out to us as domain chairs. Um, you can find us on the website. If you look at the About Our Domain section, feel free to
get plugged into the LinkedIn. Um, you see that we have our X, formerly known as Twitter, handle at the or tag at the top. Uh, and then please feel free to reach out to me if you have any personal interests of the community domain at daniel.c.lattimore at gmail.com. Um, Lacey, if people want to contact you, what's the best way to do so? Okay. Um, so they can uh, go to my um, website. I do have an email and I'll mention my Instagram. So Instagram is at Dr. Lacey at MTSI. Um, you can visit my website, which is um, mtsiconsulting.org, um, or you can email me uh, at lfaro at mtsiconsulting.org. And we can also provide these links um, in, embedded within um, within the video as well um, so that you have access. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. And I wish you the best in all... <laughs> 270, I think I lost count of your endeavors <laughs> and you still, that's the thing is that people think because you have so many things, it's like, she can't possibly do all the things. And oh, yet you do. And I'm yet you do. You have not, you have not faltered. So congratulations to you and, and thank you for being a guest today. Thank you. And thank you for always being an amazing colleague and friend. I appreciate you. That's what we're here for. All right, you all take care and have a great rest of your day.